I'm Alan Hall, host of the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast, and we have a great discussion today with Blade Bug and Force Technology from the show floor of Global Offshore Wind in London, England, where it's also about 30 degrees Celsius and sunny. Very unusual day there. Uh, Blade Bug is a UK-based company that develops robotic devices for the inspection and repair of wind turbine blades. Uh, the company's flagship product, Blade Bug Robot, is a self-powered autonomous robot that can climb and inspect wind turbine blades without the need for human intervention. And Blade Bug was founded by our guest today, Chris Cheslack. And Chris, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me back again. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Thank you. And we have Lars Vest with Force Technology with us also. Force Technology is based in Denmark and also offers a variety of consulting and engineering services in several industries, including the renewable energy industry. Force Technology is also a leader in ultrasonic inspections and inspection devices. Lars, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. So you have a really interesting partnership going. And, and Chris, why don't you start off and describe what the, this partnership is? So this is this is a continuation of, of Bladebug's uh, robotic platform integrating like really high quality um, ultrasonic non-destructive testing systems. And we have uh, collaborated, we've teamed up with, with Force Technology to uh, use their equipment, which is used for the last 20 years on uh, inspecting wind turbines in factories and mount a sort of reduced version of that within the Bladebug robot to enable uh, the same uh, inspections to be performed out in the field. Yeah, and that's remarkable because as we all know, there's a lot of damaged blades out there. And one of the most difficult tasks is to understand how deep that damage is and how large this damage is. Paint and coatings cover up most of the damage. So a lot of times uh, when technicians get out in the field and they start looking around at blade damage, they realize this is a lot worse than I thought. And that's where force technology comes in uh, because force technology can see, see the things that the human eye can't see. And, and Lars, uh, your technology and your ultrasonic uh, knowledge is remarkable. Uh, just, I've heard about your company for quite a while. I just, I've been researching it more recently. You want, want to describe what ultrasonic technology you guys possess right now? As Chris said, we have been uh, working with the industry for many years. We have been supplying equipment for uh, manufacturing quality control on the factory floor for, for many years. And um, the reason is that the ultrasonic equipment that we have developed and, and manufacture, it has some special capabilities when it comes to finding small defects in composite materials. And that's very useful on the, on the factory floor, but equally uh, useful um, in service, uh, looking for both production floors, which should have been found uh, on the production floor, but also uh, damage from operation. Yeah, and the, the force technology uh, inspection capability is obviously world renowned. There's uh, there's different kinds of, of inspections uh, and tools that you can use to inspect some of these blades. What specific piece of equipment are we in, are you going to install in Bladebug to do these uh, out in the field inspections? We are basically using the same technology as we're using in the in the workshop. Um, so it's it's technology where you can uh, rapidly scan with a high resolution and uh, find uh, virtually all kind of defects that might be a risk for the for the blade uh, in its uh, lifetime. So the the key here for any sort of ultrasonic inspection is you have to have the right tools, and you have to have high quality tools because. Doing ultrasonic inspection on composites is really difficult. And so I think this makes a lot of sense, the partnership between you two. You got to have to have the best instruments, and then you have to have a platform that can use them in the right way. And, and Chris, Playbooks really seems set up to do sort of a scanning uh, of an area just because of the way Bladebug is, has been designed. Yeah, exactly. So we, we've got the ability to maneuver probes and scanners over the surface of the blade um, in an unlimited sort of bounded area. So, you know, people do do it. You have frames where you have X, Y gantries, but we don't need that. We can do that with the robot. It's unlimited. That can be repeated. You don't need to be an expert in NDT in order to operate it. We rely on the technology uh, of the robot to perform the high quality motions. But then um, at the same time, we've got the software from Force Technology, which can assess whether the scan is good. So you, if it's not, you can go back and redo that area, which is, you know, if you haven't got a good coupling or if there's some kind of issue, that level of automation has already um, been developed and has been widely used for a number of years by Force. And so, again, it's just leveraging their, their skills and expertise to ensure that we get this high quality um, scan data to actually use. Yeah, that's 
really key. Having been a user of ultrasonic technology, this, the software seems to be the magic piece a lot of times. You have to start with good instruments, but then it, analyzing that data software-wise is really key because you, you need to be sure you have really valid data. And Force Technology has been doing a lot of work in that. And I, and I think the latest thing I've seen from Force Technology is you've been using a little bit of AI on ultrasonic uh, data. That's right. We have actually been working uh, on this part for, for many years, starting out uh, seven, eight years ago, um, and, and uh, training a machine learning model to find various kinds of defects. And that has, requires, as uh, Chris mentioned, a lot of data and a lot of experience in how to, uh, to evaluate this data. So we have been training a, a computer basically to do what, uh, what human beings are doing today. Um, evaluating data, looking for small defects, and finding out if they are severe or not. Okay, so the, the force technology sensors and the force technology software are in the, the belly or the bay of the blade bug. It's going to take that scan. That data is, the way I understand it, is it's going to go off-site uh, uh, to be looked at by someone knowledgeable in ultrasonic inspection. Is that still the plan? That's definitely one form. The, the other element is is using that uh, machine learning and AI to automatically interpret what those scan data is generating. So, you know, understanding where you've got defects. I think there's always going to be elements of having someone maybe to overlook at some of the data if it's something new or something un, uncertain. But a lot of that groundwork, so I think um, Lars was saying earlier, you know, uh, you, you can reduce like a blade scan analysis from 12 hours down to like one to two minutes. So it, it's, it doesn't need to be this big sort of, uh, you know, you're getting lots and lots of data, but then you, they've also built the software to analyze that data very efficiently and very quickly. So that data can be processed and handed over as fast as possible. Lars, that, that's really fascinating because a lot of times when you see ultrasonic inspection, like the data was taken two weeks ago, right? And, and it gets sent off somewhere and you have a quote unquote expert look at it and then engineers like me get to see that data. You're taking that down to a much simpler process because you're you're leveraging all the knowledge and experience you have in, in, in software to get data faster. Is that the approach? Yeah, you can actually use the data for three things. You can use it for, for a, a sanity check. So you can check in real time whether the data is okay. You can use it in real time to control the motion of the robot to make sure that you cover the area that you should. And then finally, of course, you can, can use it to find out if there is a defect or not and how severe it is. This is remarkable because one of the keys for offshore wind is everything is so expensive, right? Either to get a ship out, out there and people on site, the whole thing is really expensive. So time is of the essence. And if you're going to get on a blade, you need to be doing it the best possible way because the time on the blade, the time it took to get there is remarkably expensive. So then this force technology and blade bug combination then allows you to get to the site, look at the damage, and then know within a couple of minutes whether you have a problem or not. Is, is, is that the approach? I mean, that's, that's the theory. That's what we are aiming to get to for sure. And there's so many benefits and upsides to that. So I think at the beginning you mentioned that, you know, the, the, the surface damage doesn't reflect the true indication of what the damage could be below the surface. And so, you know, we've been speaking to a lot of rope access companies today, and, you know, it's the same old story where you go to do a repair because it's being categorized from a drone inspection, and it's always, or not always, but more often than not, more severe than anticipated. And you mentioned it's very expensive to be offshore the time. So if you can use that data that you've collected on those scans to really understand what that damage is, you can really assess how you're going to repair that damage. You can also then schedule how long it's going to take, when you're going to do it, who's going to do it, have the right material. So it's really about making sure you're minimizing any mistakes that you have when you go out to site to do any remedial work as well. So it's that it's that whole package. Well, and a good blade scan also tells you may be able to delay when a repair gets done also. And that's I think that's part of the difficulty today is we're not sure how long we can delay when a repair project will begin, right? And it, you need the first step in any good repair project is to understand the level of damage. That is critical. And without having like a force technology sensor and data package behind you, you, you don't really know. Eyeballs don't do it anymore. Yeah, it's really subjective. And I think we had a good, we were chatting again to a company today and they were saying, you know, how, when you've got 20 category five damages and you've only got budget to do 15, how do you know which are the 15 that you're gonna work on? I know that sounds crazy, but that, 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 this is a real life situation that we had today. And so this 
solves that problem. You can scan those damages and go, right, these are out of those severe damages already. These are the ones that are the ones you have to repair now. And so it's, it's a way of making sure that the right work is done at the right time and the ones that can wait, can wait. Right. The, the key feedback that I hear all the time on in our business is, how does this change my day-to-day -day life? As an engineer, as a technician, what happens when I implement uh, a blade bug force technology combo? You get to an answer much quicker, and then you have an idea of what the, the year looks ahead of you, right? And it is, that makes a lot of sense from an operator's side. From an OEM side, is there also some information that maybe the OEMs want to know uh, what's happening in service? Because they don't have eyes on, on, the, on the blades all the time either. Is, are you hearing a lot of discussion from OEMs? Like, I want to know how my blades are doing in the North Sea. I mean, they have no problems, blade manufacturers, so. Well, the operators would beg to differ, <laughs> I think. Yeah, so it's interesting because, I mean, um, I think for you do you do work with OEMs, obviously everyone's sort of on the NDAs, we can't sort of say much about it, but there is obviously interest knowing how well your, your products are performing because you want to, carry on improving. There was that DMV report that you've mentioned recently um, in one of your other podcasts. And you're not seeing that level of improvement that you should see. And I think it's very interesting to actually start getting this data and actually really trying to improve um, everything from the design through to the manufacturer and, and try and understand why you, you're still not seeing, you know, a reduction in, in the amount of incidents that you, that you should be having with an industry, which is now not, you know, it's not, in immature industry, so it's, it, it should be fairly mature by now. So, why? How can we? How can we use this new data to then, you know, make decisions to to you know make things better in the future and reduce these chances of, of problems? And one of the issues the operators have on the structural engineering side is that if they do do a, a drone scan, a real simple drone scan, the OEMs don't know what to do with that data. And I think that's a real problem right now. If you try to go back to an OEM, and say, hey, we think we have this issue we have some drone scans, it's sort of meaningless, right? But if you came to them with force technology sensor data, that's the same stuff they're using in their own factory. It's what the OEMs are using today. Does that then open the door to having quicker discussions about how to get blades back in service? I think they are, they are used to, to looking at data like this. So it gives them a better understanding of what is actually uh, what is actually wrong? What needs to be be uh, repaired, if any? So it's um, it 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 definitely gives them better knowledge than just having a a drone visual inspection. Uh, you you ask if uh, if this is interesting for the OEMs, and I would say that right now they are scaling up production uh, in a in a at a page that they have never done before. So it's very important for them to make sure that the that the 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 quality is uh, like it should be. And uh, they are also scaling up uh, products, which causes new new uh, issues, challenges. So I think there's definitely an interest for, for from all parties. So how soon can we see a blade bug force technology combo on blades? Is it ready for the summertime? It seems like everything's pretty well together. Yeah, we'd like to do stuff uh, this summer. So, you know, one of the things that we are looking for is, is getting it out there and on, and on turbines and, you know, start collecting that data. So We've got some, we've still got a bit of um, uh, work to be doing, but we can do that fairly rapidly and then take it out and, and put it on some turbines. So we've got some in-house testing still to do, uh, and then we'll be looking to take it out. But ideally this summer would be the expectation. At Force Technology, we have been doing in-service inspection for more than 20 years. So we have quite a lot of experience from the field that we need to take into consideration. So that's uh, what we will do as well now. Focus on, on the, um, on the on the stability, uh, and 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 the usefulness in the field, which is extremely important to make it uh, efficient. So every blade is built slightly differently, uh, and the, the beauty of blade bug is that the adaptability of putting instrumentation in it is infinite. You can put anything in its bay and, and get it get it to provide some answers for you. So on different blade types and maybe different blade sizes, Lars, are, are there going to be different kinds of sensors loaded up into the blade bug bay? Of course, if we can make room for for the two types of sensors that we're usually using, that would be very good. But uh, right now, we will probably have two different tools. So um, one tool for the majority of defect types and another tool for for a single single defect type, which is difficult to to find with the first two. So. 
So the the obviously there's like broader damage, and then there's like this this little spot damage thing, like you've been hit by a rock or something on the on transport. Uh, so that takes different kinds of tools to to detect the the damage. Yeah, actually, if you if you include the transportation uh, damage, that's a third thing for operational uh, issues. There are basically two different setups that we're using, but but one is is uh, is more universal than the other. So um, and can be used for for both things. So we're working on making sure that it can actually be used for 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 all defect types. Well, that's the beauty of a blade bug is as force technology uh, comes up with new devices in which you clearly will, because you know what the industry needs. It'll just go right into the blade bug bay and be put into service almost immediately. That, that's that's genius, because obviously the difficult part on offshore wind is getting technicians out there with any real ultrasonic knowledge, right? Those 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 technicians are super expensive, and there's only a limited amount of, of them. And in the UK alone, I think there's 11,000 offshore wind turbines uh, headed to about 20,000 over the next couple of years. There's not enough technicians to go out there and do all that that blade damage detection. So now we have another tool, right? There's another tool in the toolbox to to make the operator's life easier. Yeah, exactly. And, and to make more efficient use of their time and, and not send them to do unnecessary work or, you know, unexpected work. So it, that's, you know, one of the key challenges I think you've mentioned previously and, and it, it, we've heard it numerous times today it, it is lack of of these technicians who can do not only just the inspection but also the remedial work as well and so really trying to be efficient and how you use them that's key so if the robot can free up their time to do that work which has to be done by a person then that's saving them from doing another job unnecessarily so it's one of the key areas that we can do uh, to help with that sort of shortage of, of skilled technical people Lars force technology huge company how do people find you uh, for all the things that you do? We have a wind energy uh, website, uh, so forcetechnology.com uh, slash wind energy, uh, where, where you can find all, all the information about the products and services we are offering the wind industry. And we will have some, uh, some specific information about this uh, collaboration as well. Oh, nice. And Chris, where can people find out about Bladebug? bladebug.co.uk or LinkedIn's another really good place. So we, we keep posting regularly. So if you put Bladebug into LinkedIn, you'll you'll come across me or Stacey, our business development manager, who's just signed it over there. And uh, or we've got our own page as well. So um, yeah, we're, we're easy to find and we'll be promoting this, this collaboration. Um, so yeah, uh, keep an eye out for it. But yeah, it's a really exciting um, collaboration between us and, and Force, which are, yeah, you know, leading this wind turbine inspection. It's fantastic. It is a great collaboration, and thank you for announcing it on the Uptime Wind Energy Podcast. We appreciate having both of you on. Uh, and, and Chris and Lars, thank you so much. Cool.